Well, hello again, Mercedes fans. So we got a Mercedes made by the brand Shuko. Uh, I truthfully don't buy too many Shukos because I feel that they're a little pricey for what you get compared to the other brands. Their details are okay, they're just not as good as other brands. Still, I do like these classic Benzes, and I've never seen a Shuko in a package like this. I guess they're called paper box packaging. I took it out because I want to know what kind of Benz this was. But anyways, it's got an identical box inside of it. I do like the fact that this box is very minimal, uh, but it's not going to protect your model very well because, <coughs> excuse me, because it w wasn't packed in a blister pack. It was just packed in uh, wax paper. So that's not going to really help you if you're moving around, but I guess if you're just storing it at home, it, it should be all right. But I wouldn't really trust uh, shipping this to someone, which is that, because that little star emblem I think would break off. So another thing is, uh, I've never seen a Mercedes called a Dash Slash 8. So a little research tells me this is nicknamed the Strict 8. Strict 8 in German or Stroke 8 in English. Or also Slash 8 is another designation. Uh, I forget the reason why it's called a Slash 8 though I forget. So sorry, I didn't research it that much. Uh, yeah, there's the back for your information. Okay. So this is, a, uh, I guess, uh, it's prior to the E-Class, but it's considered the mid-size uh, Mercedes of its day. And uh, this was the W114 and W115 chassis codes, and they were produced between 1968 and 1976, and they were very popular. Over 1.9 million of these were made either in four doors, coupes, and also even a limousine, which I think is pretty cool. The W114, to my understanding, means it was powered by a, a six-cylinder engine. Uh, and then the W115 was powered by a four-cylinder engine. So I'm not sure the logic behind that, because it seems counterintuitive to me, but uh, that's what Mercedes did. Okay. So... When I opened up this uh, model, I looked at the back here and it says 200D, so I have to assume this is a 2 liter diesel, diesel inline 4 cylinder making 55 horsepower for this particular casting here. And then uh, that's really all I learned about, well, I did learn that it was designed by a French designer, Paul Brack, or Brock, I don't know how to pronounce that name, it's really unique, but I think he was the chief designer of Mercedes at this time. And then uh, one of these types of cars is the highest mileage Mercedes in history. There was a Greek taxi driver, Gregorios Sakonidis. Sakonidis. I'm not Greek, but it's Sakonidis, I think. And uh, he donated his uh, 1976 240 diesel, and it had uh, he donated it to the Mercedes Museum. It had 4.6 million kilometers or 2.9 million miles on the odometer. So that's a very durable car. Okay, let's get into this casting here. So no suspension, but these uh, wheels are pretty nice. I mean, it's okay, I guess, to not have air in those gaps. Some brands would do it. Kyosho, maybe CMs would actually have air in those tiny gaps, but I'm okay with this. Uh, I would much rather see this green and silver painted than air gaps, so I think it looks pretty good. There's also a silver chrome trim here uh, on the side of the body as well as the protruding door handles. And also the windows have silver for the chrome trim, so that's nice. Okay. So the front end, it has a uh, plastic lenses, so that's nice, and there's a separation between the turn signal and the regular part, so uh, that's good to see. Uh, so here's another criticism with Shuko, is the bumpers are casted into the metal, so this is part of the metal casting, and it's just painted silver. But, you know, other brands would actually have a plastic piece of bumper, like a Kyosha would have a chromed plastic bumper. Even green light would have a separate piece. So, I mean, you can get a green light for six bucks, right? But a Shuko, these Shukos are like fifteen, twenty dollars. So, I feel that's why I don't buy this brand so much. 
Okay, so it's got a nice chrome plastic grill with black paint in there, but no texture. You would think they would have could have easily molded a texture in there, but again, uh, for some reason this brand just doesn't care about high detail. I can understand that the emblem is, uh, you know, the way it is. It's just molded into this plastic. Uh, I'm gonna guess this is an old casting. It doesn't say when it was copyright, so it just says what the model is, scale, and shoe go. So I'm not sure when this originally came out. It's nice to see that it's screwed together though, so you can modify it, do a wheel swap, paint the interior, or whatever. A little extra silver paint for this muffler is a nice touch. Um, the tires are really skinny. They look kind of like the photographs. Maybe they could have been a little wider because they, you know, look really out of, they look really warped because they're having a hard time actually positioning them being straight because they're just not very wide. So that's unfortunate. But from the side, it doesn't look so bad. You can see a little curvature to them. So, okay. There's a uh, one mirror here. So I'm not sure if it was an option back back in that day to get a secondary mirror, but uh, Shuko only casted one, and it's part of the uh, metal casting again. It's somewhat similar to the photograph, so I guess it's not too bad. Okay, going to the back. Pretty nice uh, tail lights here, nice uh, plastic lenses, and you can see some orange, white, and red separation, so that looks pretty much like the photograph to me. This is probably the fuel filler door, interesting. Okay, and then we got a raised Mercedes star, and then we got the raised uh, handle or something, and then there it says 200D. Let me try to focus, there you go. All right, so this is nice. The chrome trim on the side wraps around to the back, so that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, panel gaps, they're okay. They're not too wide. This is a nice paint. I mean, it's a little orange peely, but it's it's nice. I like this little. Uh... I was gonna. Oh, sorry, I paused because I'm starting to think it's metallic. I see tiny flecks in there, right? I thought it was just a regular green, but maybe there's some tiny metallic flakes in there. Hmm. Let me focus again. See, it looks regular, but. Uh, I do see tiny flakes in there, so it's a really faint, faint metallic. See all these little specks up here? Interesting. Okay, well that's a unique paint job. Nice silver paint around the, the windows for the chrome trim. A little bump for probably the antenna. Nice ribs there, and nice three-dimensional raised uh, and painted silver wiper blades there as part of the window casting. Uh, these windows, yeah, there's some distortion. It's actually not so bad. I've seen a whole lot worse from other brands, so that's good. Uh, I think I'm going to need a flashlight here to show off the interior. Okay, well, that's nice. It's like a dark brown. It's nice to see a different color, you know, better than black, I think, which I'm kind of bored with because Kyosho is really, that's all Kyosho does. But this is nice, you know, it's a dark brown, but it doesn't seem like there's any additional color or uh, paint apps on the inside, just molded detail. Okay. We're actually checking the door hand. The doors do also have, uh, you know, some armrests and stuff like that. So, all right, well, it's, uh, it's an okay model. It, I guess for me, it just comes down to value. I like this model, I'm happy I got it. I just feel that it could have been better for the price. Okay, let's uh, get one of these spinners out. I don't know if this video is gonna have this humming noise. I was testing it out, I just had this thing running while I just did this whole video. But the microphone is like a, f a half meter away, so I don't know how, it's a good mic, it's a cheap, but seems to be a really sensitive microphone. So I apologize if this humming noise has been in the whole video. I'm gonna check after this and decide whether or not I'm gonna have to turn it on every time I review a vehicle or uh, you know, just leave it on and ready to go. So that first car is a Hot Wheels, you know, but I put on uh, some 3D printed hubcaps 
It's the stock wheels that just literally hubcaps glued into them. Just like a real car. It's stuck on there. Okay, uh, and then the limousine is made by GCD. So, Gain Corp. It's, uh, it's alright. Uh, but uh, some of the other viewers have told me there's a much better, much better version, and I agree with them. Uh, for some reason, the GCD f grill on this limousine isn't really accurate to the real uh, Mercedes, right? So, in fact, let me just stop this thing. The other two Mercedes have accurate grills, where you have all these horizontal, you know, slats and whatnot. But uh, this is just one big photo etched metal piece of screen, which isn't accurate, so I should have been more aware. I just kind of assumed GCD would have gotten that right, but nope. Buyer beware, you gotta check the photos versus the real car if you want a real accurate one. I'm now noticing that Hot Wheels even has the texture in the grill, right? So I mean, this is a Hot Wheels and it's a better detail than a Shuko. So that's that's pretty sad, Chuko. Uh, <laughs> uh, I sound so critical, but I mean, there there are just better, cheaper models out there. This seems to, it doesn't have the plastic headlights or taillights, though. That's the one thing holding the Hot Wheels back. But okay, well, anyways, that's it for the comparisons. These two. Let's uh. So this spin on its own on the solar thing. Okay. Well, in summary, it's a nice model. I just kind of feel though, if you're tight on the money, I, I would pass over Shuko entirely as a brand. They're just better detailed uh, models out there from other companies, I think. Uh, particularly Mini GT or some used Kyosho blister packs. They're, they're just much better detailed than Shuko. But for me, uh, I like these classic Mercedes, so I'm going to probably continue getting them. Uh, I know Shuko also has a 2002 BMW. I might pick one of those up because I only have the Hot Wheels one, which is much too large of an oversized. It's not 164. And then uh, it's possible that, oh yeah, Shuko does have other Mercedes uh, sedans, other classic ones. I think uh, I saw them on XLT off of Bear and Twice Diecast channel. So I'll pick those up someday if I can ever get a, a better price, I guess, on them. Okay, so, well, I appreciate you watching, uh, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.